What a dream to fish Church Lake. It's a dream on everybody's mind. It's a fairy tale in its own imagination. My fairy tale starts in December when Eric's had an opening day. Alan Blair was there, the Nash lads was there, and we had to leave because we needed to do something. And they had a prize draw, a raffle. Me and Dad entered it, just for a laugh to see if we'd win something. and. The main, main prize was church. And then this happened. Where's your raffle ticket sold? This first one's for five nights on Kevin's Church Lake for two people. And the winner is a James Bosnia. 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 James Bosnia. Yeah. James Bosnia. Yeah. 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 Well done, James. Yeah. Great stuff. The fairy tale was in motion. Me and Dad booked on May and we were really excited. Two days before we was meant to arrive at church, guess what happened? They started to spawn. I was absolutely devastated because it's church, it's a dream, but we've booked on and me and dad are excited, like not being funny. It's a dream in itself to say that there's a 61 pound carp in there about 10 40s, 3 or 4 50s. It's just mental. If we don't catch, I'll be sad, but to be honest, I would love to just get one fish. If I get one fish, I'll be excited. All I need now is my Daryl Pet Lucky Hat, my rods, and then we're ready. Church, here we come.
Um, I'm here to fish church. Thank you. Right, we're here. I've got a game changer from uh, Tom Farrell. Oh wait, no, um, Tom Farrell at Nash. Um, no, um, just life at Nash. This is a definite game changer. Right, Dad. Chop, chop. Get the barrels out. <laughs> Me and Dad walked around the lake with Liz and we both fancied the pylon swim and guess what we had to do? The dreaded coin toss and guess what? I won. So I got it. I was really happy. And then Dad's got the swim next to mine. So hopefully we'll be back with you. Yeah, so, we'll, let, we'll let the bailiffs do it. Heads. Heads, do you want this swim? Yeah, heads this swim. No, <laughs> no, I'm having that. <laughs> I'm checking the W. You, you, Church fish. Get in. It isn't big, but every fish is welcome. Get it out on the mat, unhook it, and then we'll show it you. Boom. We've arrived, we've set up, and I'm just gonna give you a quick update what's been happening. Dad probably caught the smallest fish in the lake at about a pound and a half, and then I caught- I think that's being very generous, a pound and a half. I'll pick a pound and a half, come and then, on. And then I caught, would you say about- Eight, eight pound, eight, nine. An eight pound coming, really nice shoals on both fish though. It just shows you what 
what Kevin's produced here is a fantastic fishery. The fish are thriving, aren't they? Mm -hmm. So that's that's really good for the future of the fishery. Um, but yeah, we've had a bit of disappointment, haven't we? Yeah, because I've lost a decent fish. Dad had to go out in the boat, sad, sadly, because he got weeded up, and sadly he lost it. Yeah, things happen, but it's only the first day. We've what we, we've had. A, we're off the mark. We've we're, walked, we've we're off the marsh. Fish. And we've had his rods in what a few hours, so and I've only had one rod out. So. Yeah, the spots are rocking. You've got all your set up. I've got mine set up. I've got one closer in and then one farther out at the willow because I've been seeing fish jumping out on in the, the fish closer all in. over your spot and the fish absolutely everywhere all over your spot. It's absolutely like a little piece of heaven down here, isn't it? Yeah. So what tactics are you using on your three rods then? I'm using on my left hand rod just off the point of the island. Yep. Um, just a scatter in the boiler. Um, then I've got a blow back rig on there. Um, the second rod's on a Z, just in the middle of the lake. And then right out right is a solid bag and that's what's been doing with my bites, yep. a solid bag. Yeah, because when we put the deeper out there, in the middle of the water, you can just see fish just patrolling Yeah, just there. patrolling, so it's worth sticking a zig out there in it, just to see, um, see what goes on, really. My tactic, I have a two-foot zig on near the willow, but also uh, in my closing spot, I have a bottom bit, so hopefully that can produce me more fish. Come on. Coming into the second afternoon now, the fish, the big fish aren't playing ball because they're not showing where they are and where they're holding up. But me and Dad's spots, we know they're working because we're getting mithered by the little fish. And you know, if you get mithered by the little fish, a big monster lurking in the deep could grab your hook bait and hopefully that could happen. Me and Dad have done several circuits of the lake with our Polaroids on because we can see the fish more clearly than in the water. Dad has seen one fish in the margins. He gave it some boiler and he's walked away from the spot. And hopefully if we go back to that spot, the water will be all cloudy so we know that they've been feeding. By the way, my dad always says when I have my Polaroids on, because they're too big for my face, that I look like Carlos from Hangover. I don't know why he said that, but the weather has not been on our side because of the high pressure and it's been sunny but me and dad have got zigs out so hopefully we can get a bite
stunners in here, isn't there? here with Mr Urban Banks himself, Alan Blair. I'm just going to ask him a few questions about Churchill. How many fish are in here? There are approximately 80 carp in here. Right here right now maybe 8,000. Obviously you've experienced it yourself James. There's been an abundance of the, the young and small fish coming through from spawning. Yeah. That never used to happen mate. Up until a couple of years ago there was a solid 80 carp in here and nothing else. And the ecosystem, the environment, something's changed and it's allowed the fish to spawn successfully and for those young fish to come through, which yeah. I know you've caught untold amounts of. But no, the, the 80 sort of 18 fish that are in here, the smallest is around mid 20s and they go up to uh, the lake records 57 pounds, 12 ounces. Um, a real mixed bag. Um, there's probably four fish at the right time of year that will go 50 pounds. There's probably 10 to 15, 40s, obviously a large number of, of 30s and decent 30s. And you've got big commons and you've mm. got very, very uh, levery looking characters. You've got some incredibly scaly fish, including one fully scaled that goes over 40 pounds. Mm. Yeah, there's some really special fish to catch. And like, how deep is it like around the, the lake? The, the lake is, it was dug by Kevin um, around 15 years ago now, and it's a clay lake. The, the, the soil that we're on is clay, which is great, you know, when you want to yeah. dig a lake. So the lake is, it was dug and excavated with depths in the middle and over by the lodge down to about 12 feet, depending on the water level. It's a little bit low at the moment. Um, the average depth's probably around five foot. Um, there's an abundance of, of this stuff in here, the silkweed. Now to an angler, it's a real pain in the neck, yeah. you know, but to the fish, this is full of, of food and stuff. Uh, it's an absolute larder for the, the bugs and the insects to live in. Um, there are some clay areas, which I know you found yourself yeah. to fish over, uh, and there is some decent weed. There's a couple of areas behind this island and this island where you've got an established sort of weed bed, and it's a really good carp environment for them. How big, because um, you've got cops down the other uh -huh. side, so how big's cops and like how many fish are in there? Is it the same amount? Cops, or? at the moment, we're actually doing quite a lot of work on the cops, so there's only eight fish left in there. One mid 40 mirror and, and some sort of homegrown commons, and, and the plan is we will also remove those to our new lake. I don't know if anyone's showing you yeah. that. Someone took you for a walk around the new lake next not, door? Not that new lake next door. Be before but... you leave, make sure someone comes in and gives you a little walk around there. So the, the cops, the, the previous cops fish are now residing in there yeah. just for the time being because we're going to do a large amount of work on the cops we're going to take this stuff out uh, which has basically got out of hand um, yeah. there are a multitude of ways that you can try and eradicate this some people are using an electric current other fisheries are dying the water but really it, it's, a, it's a pain and the easiest way for us to quickly and safely eradicate all of this from the cops is to house the fish somewhere else mm -hmm. we can then bring some large plant excavators on site we can drain the lake scrape it all out remove all of this and basically turn it back into the the amazing fishery it once was yeah uh, thanks for that information and hopefully we can get some more fish on the bank you're Even gonna some... get one you'll get a big one <laughs> some big ones you like will that, you will you will so hopefully that could happen listen will happen lovely to see you good luck yep. for the rest of your session i've got to shoot off now i really hope you and dad catch the monster and the fish of your dreams sweet see you later buddy see ya see ya
things have not gone according to plan. Big fish have been showing on my spot, but they just haven't been feeding. I've been trying solid bags in the weed, I've been trying chods in the weed, and we're just getting mithered by the little fish. I've had like the biggest little fish out of about eight, nine pound, and we're just putting them in the retainer, calling the bailiff lays to so he can put them round into the stock pond. But I think with this rod can do some magic, so hopefully because we baited up an area with some a lot and lot of bait. Big fish are down there, so hopefully we can get a bite. I'm trying to waft her, so hopefully it sort of uh, match the hatch, so hopefully that can get me a bite. And as you saw behind me, a fish just jumped out. Now on all my spot, it's in line. I'm a bit closer in, but they've been doing that every day. Big behemoth carp. I've been jumping out but not feeding and it's just annoying but hopefully this rod can do some magic and we can catch a big one. Dad is setting up a trap for the fish because they sun down in this in this corner so hopefully it can go. Hopefully it can go with a, with a bite. I'm here with my dad, we're going to watch the sunrise on the last day when we're at church. It's been a tough week because I've only caught one fish minus all them little ones that I was catching in the edge. I've lost a couple of decent fish and then I've lost eight little ones. And then you had a run at about half past three half, in the morning. Half past three this morning. I'm chod by the island. It's not by the it's a couple good couple of rod lengths off the island on a nice clay spot. And uh, it's uh, rattled off, I've hit into it, and it's kited a little bit and then it's gone. So the wise old fish aren't they? Mm. Getting rid of those hooks quite quite well. The beaters this time say so how many fish would you have, how many have you lost? I think I've had around seven to eight small ones ranging from two pound to um, 
eight, I think, is my biggest. Mm. Um, then probably lost about ten little ones. I've lost two big ones now. So I lost one in the weed when I went out with uh, Les in the boat to try and get it back. And then I lost that one this morning. So it's just been frustrating, and it? it hasn't panned out the way we mm. thought it was going to. And uh, for you, I'm just disappointed for you that it turned out this way, but I suppose that's fishing. But rods are out, the, the traps are set. We've got some time left, hopefully we can get a big one before we've got to leave. But what a place to wake up to, eh? Mm-hmm. What a place to wake up to in the morning. I'm here with Leslie Bailey <laughs> and as I said the fairy tale's over and sometimes the dream doesn't always happen this is the last load that's it I'm going home